day four of the novena to saint daniel comboni we continue to understand and know more of his fruits the institute of the comboni missionary sisters or as known by its founding name pia madre de la nigrizia takes its origin in the charism of Bishop Daniel Comboni, who, with profound intuition, recognized that a consecrated woman has a special role to perform in the missionary action of the church. January 1, 1872, saw the birth of the Institute of Pia Madre de la Nigrizia, SMC, amidst enormous uncertainties and great difficulties, especially through the lack of a suitable person as a superior. Well, I think that, you know, the God's call is always very mysterious. I don't know why exactly at the beginning I chose, but I was quite adamant I wanted to become a Comboni sister. Uh, first, I want to become a sister. I was around 19 years old. And then, uh, you know, by chance or by God's, God's plan, I met with uh, another young woman who wanted, who knew the congregation, and then we started to exchange information, and that's why I came to know the family and where, it, and where it was working and type of ministries, and uh, and I started from there, and I've never regretted that. The first sisters were Italians, but with the time the congregation grew big, and we come from about 33 countries working in 30 countries in the world. So we have become a very big family. We have also Ugandans who have also joined this congregation. And uh, we are multicultural. People from Europe, America, Asia, Africa. And in Africa, we have people coming from different cultures, tribes, languages. So it's a very rich country, a, ri a rich congregation, I mean. And um, in Uganda here, we have a formation house. All the young people that I accompany in the first stage of formation, they, they join with me while they're in their secondary schools. And when they're ready after finishing their higher institutions of learning, they go to Nairobi, and after Nairobi, postulancy, they come to Uganda in, Nai in Namugongo, where they are formed to, to be able to li live the, the demands of the mission today. Being multicultural, international, it requires a kind of solid formation. So we prepare these young girls in our novitiate here in Namugongo. On 6th September 1874, two years later, Maria Bolezoli entered the congregation and this was a decisive date for the institute. She became the first superior general. She was the support of the institute in the difficult period of the Mahdia revolution guiding it with a faith that recognized this foundation as the will of God. The institute developed progressively in different stages, marked by events, chapters, and the governing of successive general superiors. After the death of Mother Bolezoli in 1901, the Komboni sisters from Egypt and from the Sudan, the first and then only mission fields, took on activities in Ethiopia and reached out as far as the Great Lakes of Central Africa in Uganda, thus realizing the dream of Daniel Komboni. Following the footsteps of our, uh, of, uh, our founder, Komboni, who wanted his sister to work for the poorest and most abandoned 
you will find that the Comboni sisters are um, committed a ministry of uh, development, you know, faith, but also from you know point human point of view because one cannot go without the other. So we, we work on both fronts: you know, pastoral catechesis, um, human ministry like teaching, nursing, women development. Justice and peace, you know, we, we try to cover all the basic uh, human rights that a person is supposed to have and, is not, and they are not attended. So you find us. In my village, I was born, as I was growing up, I had a kind of uh, attraction towards people who were suffering. I didn't know why. I didn't know that that was already a seed of vocation in me. I was always attracted to people who are lonely, people who are suffering, be it students or be it in the village, be pupils like that. I had no idea of vocation. But when I, I was a, in the secondary school, I had component sisters who were my teachers. And then they were teaching us. And then they started to talk about vocation. Then I felt, eh, I think that thing which was always attracting me is God putting it so that I could be a missionary like this. But then I had one problem, I had health problems. And then they said to be a missionary you must be healthy. My face fell down. When my face fell down the sister noticed and called me. And then asked me why I was sad. When I, she was talking, I was very excited. And all of a sudden, I, my face fell down. So I explained to her. Then immediately there, they saw I was very active in school, very committed in church, in, in all aspects I was very active. So they tried to find ways to take me for treatment. And indeed, I was treated and uh, my health problem got resolved which for me was a miracle of St. Daniel Comboni. I'm a nurse by profession, so when I finished my training, I was asked to move, to come to Uganda, and to, when I came here eventually, and then they sent me to Matani. I wanted to be a lawyer. With issues of justice, even among ourselves, children, people knew I was fighting for, them, for justice and truth. Eh? But now, these things faded as I continue with my studies in the secondary school. I started joining vocation groups and we, I got enlightened what it means, this human growth, Christian formation, missionary formation, and then I did my postulancy, novitiate, which was all in Uganda. Well, um, as, I, as I said, from the, this small master seat, which uh, was formed by five members, the first sister came to Uganda from 100 years ago, you know, that, that the master seed grew to a big tree and, uh, and then uh, at a certain point I was told we, are, we were more than 200 sisters, you know, mostly in the north. So when I look back I said really God had a plan for me. God had a plan for me and he has called me and he has assigned me now after working as a teacher in Zambia for eight years and here doing vocation. I'm very happy, I don't regret. And I wish many people could feel the joy I am feeling in my heart to give their life totally to God, to, to make God known, to share the faith that God gives for us. Well, the other group of missionaries like the White Fathers, the, 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 the missionary of Africa, were evangelizing the south. And so the Comboni took the north. They, they mostly, they start from the north. And uh, there's where we are still more numerous here. It is in Kampala in the south, we have only a logistic presence, you know, because uh, offices and all administrative work, but uh, our, our mission, our ministry are namely in the Gulu district, Arua, we only one community actually in Gulu and Arua, and we have four in, uh, in Karamoja, um, Kotido and Matani and, and Maroto. 
diocese. We are serving there in a hospital, in primary school, two primary school. Uh, my sister is also committed in a senior um, community school, catechetical center, women's desk, a variety. We are also serving Lira. We have one, one community in Lira, in, and that is Apoque High College, where those, um, the abduction of the students took place some years back with the Konyi. We start following the young girls right from secondary school. And there, we give them formation. There is what we call human formation. A person becomes aware of who am I, my gifts, my limitations, uh, my talents, my capabilities. So you become aware so that if you are aware I have this gift, you will know as a missionary tomorrow, I'll be using this gift to serve the people of God as God has granted me. If I am aware of my weaknesses, for instance, I'm short-tempered, I know God is going to call me, God is calling me to serve his people. I cannot continue being so short-tempered, otherwise I'll be slapping people. So I will be formed. Why am I so short-tempered? What is it that is making me what I am? Eh? So that these weaknesses through human formation programs eh, will make me to become less irritative with the things that could irritate me. By the time I'm, I join postulancy, human formation programs are drawn in the formation houses. And it keeps molding my life as a human person. I become mature, that's what I call human maturity. There are different areas in human growth that are being followed up to help a person, a young person to grow. Apart from human formation, there is a Christian formation. We are Christians from our families. We are baptized. Sometimes we only know some kind of traditional prayers. We, in our formation programs, we have um, sessions that help our young people to grow spiritually and as a Christian through uh, study of scripture, study of the church documents, a lot of things. So when you go out as a missionary, you will find people who are very poor spiritually. And then you will be able to share that faith which you got from home and which has even grown more through the formation programs. And you become a, a very useful miss, missionary, humanly mature, Christianly mature. And then there is also the missionary formation. You know, as missionaries, you are not going to work in your place. You will be exposed to different cultures. You already know your own culture. But there are other cultures which are different from yours, with the good aspects and with the negative aspects. So you will be formed how to embrace other cultures which are completely different from yours through different programs of formation to be a mature missionary. If you expose uh, the society to, to all this uh, development demands without accompanying them, without uh, giving them what they are now, what they ask now, you know, the, you have helped this youth to reach uh, a very high qualifications, okay? But then if you don't keep following, assisting government authorities, don't give an, an outlet to this, you know, this uh, educated class, which is now the majority, uh, then they turn up to this uh, other, other um, uh, you know, they have to, to make ends meet somehow. And if you don't give them the way of doing it in an honest way, they, ha they resort to this um, other way of surviving because a person was gone and to Makere, let's say, to have a, a degree, will never go back to shepherd the, the cattle. Will never. So, the, you know, that's what I said. It has to be a gradual, gradual uh, movement, uh, development cannot jump the infra 
structure, you know, the, the steps which are there in between. It has to be a, a very, very slow but very gradual process. Gradual process. Otherwise, you know, there is a, a break in the personality of people. They are no longer appreciating and, and, and uh, seeing the importance of traditional culture, of authority that they used to have in the past. The, what they want now is, is to achieve, to be successful at all costs. Well, I don't know what is the way forward, maybe, what are we planning? What are the new emergency, the new poverty? This is what, you know, because the country, what it is now, was not the country that we knew 30 years ago. It changed. And we have to change with the change of culture, of mentality, of, uh, with the um, development and so on. Also, our way of uh, evangelization has to change. So now, um, mm, Institutions like uh, health center, like uh, maybe primary teacher, maybe can be take, can be done by somebody else. And there are very many lay people who are good and strong in faith who could take over. But there are this new poverty that we are looking at. And you know, you have nowadays these children, street children, you have these women trafficking, we have this alcohol um, issue there, we have violence, domestic violence, there, is a, there are a lot of new poverties which were not there when I first came. People had, uh, were having less demands, education was not the priority, children were there very happily with their cattle, little. but nowadays no, this doesn't, it's not there anymore, people are aiming at something higher, you know, with education and, and the, with that the demands increase. And paradoxically, you know, new poverty come up. It's a spiral that you, you are really to be present and to see how, how, how best to, to sustain, to, to encourage development, but it has to be at a human pace, not to want to reach what you cannot reach. Today, Komboni sisters have extended to other countries of Africa, to the USA, Latin America, Middle East, and the Europe, mostly for formation purposes. Oh,